dudes and dudettes, ladies and gentlemen, people of various sorts. I am Sebastian Koberg and today I will bring to you an entirely different thing. Here in the red corner at the 6 o'clock starting position of the map, Metalopolis, we have none other than Polyrev as the Zerg player. Who could that be, ladies and gentlemen? Well, I'll let you ponder that for a moment, but it's someone you know very well, I can tell you as much. In the opposite corner, as the yellow Protoss player, we have none other than Knive, spawning right up here. And for Swedish viewers out there, and some others, I reckon, you will be familiar with a certain skincare product that is known as Nivea. Nivea. And, well, Knive uh, got his whole vibe from Nivea, just took away the A really, but uh, that's what he's all about and I'm sure that will come through in his way of playing Protoss, the Sons of Ire in this game against Polyrev. So uh, I'll let you ponder that one also, what could that mean? Uh, Pylon now finishing and as you can see, no gateway being produced or anything. Is this a calculated move or just complete suckage? We don't know. Meanwhile over here in Polyrev's base we see, uh, oh, uh, no overlords, uh, supply blocking himself already and now planting a spawning pool up here in a strategic position. Is this meant to be a wall in or is it just because he couldn't get hold of any drone and put it at a better position? We don't know ladies and gentlemen, this could be a testament of true skill, like really unorthodox behavior, what TLO will be doing next month or it's simply suckage. We don't know ladies and gentlemen, this whole game will be characterized by uh, the letter S. That is for style, that is for suckage, that is for many other things. Meanwhile, we now see quick gas going down for knife. Does he have a strategic plan? Is this a quick sentry rush? Would he go for dark templars? Uh, or does he simply likes to get quick gas just in case? We don't know. This is uh, an unbearable tension, ladies and gentlemen, as we now see the gateway finishes and we will now be producing a cellar right away. Yes, indeed, he is right on the ball and also a chrono boosting it. This guy really knows what he's doing, that is obvious. Meanwhile, in Polarev's base, we do see that, ah, this time he actually produced an overlord, sort of, in time, without supply blocking himself, but yeah, he did actually. So, Polarev is fighting from behind. Maybe he likes to be the underdog, maybe, uh, maybe that's where he is as most comfortable. It seems like his money is stacking up. Is he going for a fast expansion? And if so, will he place the hatchery at the right position uh, for it to be optimal? Will it be too far away from the minerals? We don't know just yet. There it goes. Looks to be okay, actually. We now see a scouting probe in Polyrev's base. Uh, Knife knows all about it. He knows that there are no circlings, but there is a spawning pool, uh, which benefits him perfectly. A queen is now out. Will this queen be able to take down the probe? Will Polyrev be on the ball? He chooses the larva inject and this probe is now leaving the base but will it stop its movement pattern because Knife is not that good at uh, maneuvering his forces? No, actually not. Oh, liquid TLO is online. Nice. Anyways, uh, the hatchery is not even halfway complete and Knife knows all about it. What will he do, however? He's chrono boosting out zealots. He's got two of them already placing a pylon here which that can't be a good thing ladies and gentlemen. That is just pure suckage. And now a second gateway on the way. Cybernetics core not yet uh, finished, there it is, halfway done-ish, uh, so it seems like he will go in for stalkers, because if he wanted self-speed, ah, haha, <laughs> tricksy, ladies and gentlemen, Knight just wanted us to believe that, no, he cancelled his cybernetics uh, core, because that would simply, that, that would be too obvious, so instead, three salads, not supply block, but once again, Polyrev is, so this is gearing up to be a very interesting game, ladies and gentlemen. Note, not a single circling has been produced, but instead going straight for the Roach Warren, and only then starting gas, two gas. This is not what you would expect, ladies and gentlemen, and that must be the genius of it. Polyrev, now this is a player uh, who knows his stuff, I, I assure you, uh, this, this might seem bonkers, but really, uh, it's just so genius that uh, it's difficult to comprehend. Now I'm just chilling out here, uh, probably forgotten about it, or maybe it's a strategic move, we don't know. Now transferring drones like a boss. Uh, this is looking really good here. See how his money is stacking up just so he can have it later and no gas next to it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is out of the box thinking. Really blue sky stuff. Meanwhile, we see six zealots and surely a few more. Uh, one just hanging out in case, uh, producing stalkers now and a forge. Because who needs cybernetics core, really? No. You want to build it halfway done 
around, then cancel it and build a forge so you can get an upgrade uh, just as this battle is over. But now we see six zealots uh, walking in and there's absolutely nothing here to defend. Two queens actually, what will they be able to do? We see four circles producing, will they be here on time and will they be able to scratch the paint on these zealots? The queens are now in the midst of battle, will Paul the Red Friend use it in time? He does not. No, he does not have what it takes, or maybe he wants to save the energy to have a sort of deposit or something. In either case, the second queen goes down, and servings are falling. One salad has gone down, uh, two queens, all the probes and servings managed to take down one salad. Again, blue sky thinking, ladies and gentlemen, this is not what you see every day, and that is exactly the kind of strategy that Polyrev uses to win some games. His hatchery seems to be doomed. What will he be able to do? We've got a roach warren finished. I see three roaches on the way and a handful of zerglings. Uh, actually, eight of them now. They are all what remains of Polarev's defense. And this is when his genius strategy starts to kick in. Meanwhile, we see Knight going for the gold. Quite literally, he knows that he's ahead and he will capitalize on that. Going for uh, attack upgrades now and two stalkers has not joined the fray. Third one down here. And I see how these zerglings are geniusly placed on hold so they can take hits without uh, being able to dish any back. Uh, these roaches now getting out there being dangerously close to getting killed themselves uh, needlessly as their brethren did just a moment ago and uh, now we seem to have a back and forth action kind of thing ladies and gentlemen. Take a quick look here at the unit stab. We see seven deadly servings with three roaches there. Uh, just an extra buffer and a queen versus seven zealots and five stalkers. So now Knife has got it almost the cat in the bag uh, he has uh, the win within such close reach so how will he do it now we see polarev again ladies and gentlemen his genius starts to kick in just as he's about to lose uh, this creep tumor Ooh, it made it now uh, that's a glorious creep tumor ladies and gentlemen that's a kind of uh, margin that polarev operates on here yeah. The thinnest of lines, really. But now his roach numbers are increasing and building a spine crawler here geniusly. Because do you see, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, and I know I keep saying, ladies and gentlemen, uh, too much all the time. Well, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I just cannot not do it. So, dudes and dudettes, see this placement of the spine crawler. He lured, he trickseed these enemy forces to kill his hatchery and all his drones and two queens so that he could get them right where he wanted them, almost within the reach of his spine crawler and roaches. See, this is how a truly smart player operates. This is how you lure a trap. You let let your opponent take the gold, transfer probes, or actually stalkers, and uh, almost, almost kill you. This is when you walk down with your spine crawler so that you can almost plant it and start your counter attack. See how spine crawler going up and down, doesn't know what to do? Well, he's just feigning that he doesn't know what he wants to do. This is uh, blue sky strategic thinking, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you make your opponent feel like he or she is winning, but in fact, she's or he just losing flat out. It's just not obvious yet. See now how these reinforcements are joining the trap that is so ingeniously set by Polarev. Meanwhile, we see uh, Lair and uh, Robotics Facility going up for our uh, Protoss player Knive, who's uh, named after a skincare product in Sweden. And uh, will he be going for Colossa, Immortal, or some other genius units? I mean, I would love to see a mothership rush out of him, but maybe that's too obvious too. It's been done like three or four times, so uh, I'm sure he will be far more unorthodox than that. Now look here at the roach numbers, they are in truly increasing and building a second spine crawler. This is why he was saving up all his money earlier ladies and gentlemen, so that he could afford to do crazy stuff like that. Speaking of crazy, uh, we see a slight troop movement, but we do see immortals being produced somewhere wherever that robotics facility is. Here it is indeed ladies and gentlemen, immortals. Any normal player so to speak would have gone for Colossa. Uh, because that is allegedly a smart thing to do, but oh no, not Knife, he knows how to truly, uh, well, do what is not seemingly smart. See here, going for shields instead of armor, because hey, everybody goes for armor, so that's predictable. Knife is not predictable. He might, however, be vulnerable if these circlings go up here, because surely Polarev is aware that the, it could be a base here, so he will probably scout this and take down all the unguarded probes. Oh, he does not. He probably knows that Nai would expect that, and even though he's completely undefended, he would somehow be able to defend it anyway, so he would instead park them up here, where Nai least expects it. 
Meanwhile, we see further stalkers walk into this trap that has been set by Polarev, and soon I'm sure he will shut that trap and kill all the enemy units, as was his plan all along. Look at how he's placing a macro hatchery inside his base, and now we see that the offensive is moving out. First spine crawler moving out. Will it plant? Yes, indeed, it's planting far away from battle, and the roaches are bravely retreating up the stairs, I was about to say, and now the spine crawler is left on its own devices, and that is exactly what was the plan all along. One immortal dishing out hurt, this queen walking out to die because uh, she's bipolar and the cell farmer and very suicidal. Uh, and uh, well, that's simply the way it goes. That's what she wanted all along. And see now, this spine crawler being able to tricksy uh, this uh, stalker into oblivion. This is the plan, ladies and gentlemen. It's now taking form. And if you ever doubted it, I'm sure you trust in Polarev's genius right now. See as he's finishing circling speed uh, here at the 13:30 minute mark of the game when there are no circlings. That's what we call. Genius, really. A genius of a sort. And again, see how this spine crawler uh, really, really uh, captivates the moment and indeed uh, captures the forces of Nine. Uh, this is how you lure a trap, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by not uh, allowing your opponent to know he's actually losing. And even though that spine crawler went down, uh, he managed to uh, scratch the underbelly of the forces of Nine. We now see the battle going back and forth. And Polyrev slowly but surely, even though he has no expansion and Nive has the gold, uh, is slowly winning because, ladies and gentlemen, what's happening here? Nive has left his uh, rear open. Oh, that sounded so wrong. And he's getting... Uh, let's not finish that metaphor. He's getting hurt, ladies and gentlemen. Severely hurt. See, he says, yeah, oh, uh, he's paining, ladies and gentlemen, because he did not think of this. And now his forces stand here inside the polar red trap and can do nothing. We see now Roach is strategically placed here in a corner and uh, uh, the spine crawler in the middle. And now we will see the uh, trap sh shut and uh, finally finish off Nive. What will he do to come back? Because surely this was Polarev's plan all time long and now he will crush these forces undoubtedly focusing the immortal and taking so much hurt in the process but this spine crawler, this genius spine crawler that uh, Polarev was so slowly taking towards is now paying his dues and the stalkers are obliterated. Ladies and gentlemen this is getting exciting. Still there are certain not anymore in space actually because with severe hurt and damage, uh, Nye managed to uh, save some grace and in instead uh, rebuilding his infrastructure here at the gold, which I should point out, Polarev knows nothing about, but I'm sure he senses it. I'm sure he senses it very strongly. So will he uh, be able to uh, kill off Nive here with this deadly roach squadron of uh, a handful and then some? Reinforcing. Uh, notice how he's not re-expanding yet. Maybe this drone will. Yes, I think this drone is going towards the gold, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, yes. Polarev's uh, uh, ingenious plan of expanding at the 16 minute mark to the gold uh, is now complete and uh, he will now begin his late game strategy that may or may not include other units than simply roaches and here we see now him obliterating all the forces at Knives Ramp and will surely be able to finish off with the circling started with the open rear at the floor there, yes. And uh, the robotic facility and the observer inside it will never see the light of day. He will never uh, write the dear John letter home to his uh, uh, observer girlfriend because he simply never made it to the front. Loser! So it seems like uh, Polarev is indeed winning this battle, expanding to the gold because, of course, uh, Knives' gold is now diminishing. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see the pattern emerging here? Do you see? The, the brilliant plan constructed by Polarev uh, when he was asleep the night before this game, surely in his dream land and uh, in his head movies. Uh, we see now Hanai in desperation is rebuilding uh, gateways all over the place. Having actually researched warp gate technology and learned how to use it, is now uh, rebuilding some forces. But to what end, ladies and gentlemen? Surely you can see that Polarev is winning this very convincingly. However, he does not yet know, uh, but again, he senses this. He knows that Nai is here. He will not be taken by extreme surprise when he does not win the game right off. Uh, he knows he's there, he just doesn't want to reveal that to Knife. So, killing off these units, seems like these roaches are indeed uh, scouting away to all other places than here, obviously, because he knows that already with his spider senses. Now transferring drones like a boss once again and uh, have um, yet to utilize the gold. He wants to save it for later, that's what he's all about. He's a very economic dude, this Polarev, whom uh, is, is, he's a dear friend of mine, I appreciate him uh, a lot. He, he, uh, 
he's got an interesting dress code, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, quite a nice chap. And here we see now Nye uh, bravely cancelling his expansion because his old lord saw it. And there uh, we now see how Polyrev, uh, being well aware again, in a way, that uh, Nive is uh, uh, well expanded here. Again, he, he, he doesn't see it, but he knows it. Uh, it's now securing all other positions, just hanging out by this pylon because he can't see it. He just doesn't want to ruin it for Nive yet. And uh, Nive, meanwhile, expanding down here. Seems like Polarev might be onto him though. And uh, what will happen? Do you notice how uh, Polarev is now all but depleted here at his mineral field and uh, having oversaturated his uh, gold here? Well, and no further gas, by the way. All part of the unorthodox way of playing StarCraft. I mean, if TLO or even Slayer's Boxer, uh, the grand pros that we all know and love, would go up against this, they would not know what to do, because no one plays this way. Uh, this is simply sort of like Rayman uh, StarCraft. This is autistic StarCraft. No offense to autistic StarCraft players out there, because exactly this is a testament to how good you can be if you have that personality and now we see here how the autistic maneuver by Polyrev is uh, only now discovered by Nye. Polyrev of course knew that all along and here saying some censored words, uh, words of encouragement probably uh, in a foreign language, maybe Latvian and uh, now discovers in inverted commas and here he sees Nye's other pathetic expansion attempt that indeed Nive is very well fortified and that he has been lazy and not kept up with his shit and here is now the tunneling floors and in the station pit. But uh, what I wonder, will Polyrev remember to also upgrade the uh, normal burrow which will actually enable the infestors to burrow? We shall see. Maybe he saves that for later. Infestation pit seems like he's ticking too high. Will this be the broodlords we all know and love which will be a very... Uh, uh, effective strategic maneuver according to conventional rules of playing Starcraft or will he go for the dreaded Ultralisk? We shall see. I'm sure it will be uh, what would be least expected by most players so here we see some pathetic slow salads because why do you need salad speed when uh, you can just skip upgrading it? Uh, dying needlessly. M meanwhile, however, Knight continues to produce buildings because just maybe Polarev will allow him to keep them. Who knows? No. Knight cancelling it all out and is now confided to his one and only gold base, quickly getting this defeated. Saying something here in uh, Swedish, which means uh, I love all children, but not in that way. And uh, moving on. Uh, what will Polarev do? He's now re-expanding uh, to his uh, old base, which uh, Nive is well aware of, and uh, has some roach forces spread out. It's even got no upgrades whatsoever. No. Because, uh, again, wh why would you? It's conventional, and we don't do that here. We play Rayman Starcraft, as established. Nive being an arduous little... Uh, continuous to expand. He, he, he doesn't want to die, he wants to live. He has uh, seen many movies with happy endings, maybe this will be one or, uh, one like that, uh, who knows. Uh, he, he continues to believe and that is the important thing, especially these days. We see a lair now slowly morphing into a hive and it seems like that uh, uh, Ultralisk plan or will it be Nidus worms, I'm sure it will be something and Orthodox uh, is slowly taking shape. Now, Nive's expansion attempt is again stomped, I mean this is like pistol whipping a blind kid ladies and gentlemen but uh, that's what Polarev does, uh, especially in the late game, and uh, he can uh, really utilize his opponent's mistakes about what is happening here. Nive is doing a counter-attack, and it seems like the dreaded roach forces, the unupgraded roaches, uh, simply cannot stand the onslaught. Ladies and gentlemen, will this be Nive's comeback? Will he be able to clench victory from uh, this uh, Rayman stock guy that is Polarev? Will he be able to make it back uh, based on his now depleted gold base? And... Uh, uh, soon to perhaps be uh, finished uh, expansion. Yes, there it goes and uh, building a lot of uh, probes queuing them up like a pro. Will he transfer? Yes, he does. I mean, this is uh, the skincare product Protoss and he knows what he's doing. Meanwhile, we do see here how Polyrev is uh, continuing to mine his gold base, uh, expanding here to the five o'clock and uh, got a few things going. Having not uh, moved any spine crawlers, because why would you? And here, two evolution chambers standing empty. Again, blue sky thinking, this is not how you normally do it, so that's why Polyrev does it. Uh, we see no further tech buildings, because roaches are good. Roaches are good, especially unupgraded roaches. You know, plain, simple, they keep it real. Uh, they don't get caught up in all the bling and the uh, hunt for status and, you know, stuff like that, like these stalkers who's got 
you know, uh, Ponzi plasma shield upgrades. Uh, that's not street cred, that's not legit. And here we now see the drones uh, quickly getting uh, dismantled and pummeled and see now the clenching maneuver by Nile uh, be able to kill all these probes uh, like they were ants caught in the glass jar or something and uh, killing this expansion. Was this part of Polyrev's plan all along you do wonder? Uh, here is Roaches are hanging out here over the ledge. Did he mean for them to stand down here but misclick? Who knows? Uh, this ladies and gentlemen is turning into a very interesting battle. Uh, we have yet to see any further tech go down, uh, but what is this? This is the Ultralisk Cavern, ladies and gentlemen, as you have seen building here for quite some time here in the production tab. Now finishing, uh, will he be able to get his Ultras out? Because of course they take an absolute uh, nightmare long time, uh, like a night full of nightmares, thereby feeling long to build. Will he get them out before these Celts and Stalkers crush his base? Who knows? Now withdrawing his forces from the north, will they be able to uh, connect and uh, defend this base before it goes down another time here? Walking in three roaches so they can die one at a time, and here you see the beautiful tension maneuver. You see the burrow. Na -na 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 uh, unburrowing and here we see now the stalkers of Nile getting killed finally ladies and gentlemen it does seem like Polyrev's original trap it worked once again see that's how you build a good trap you use it once you use it twice and you allow your uh, opponent to just walk into it again see unconventional strategies this will uh, really really become possible within the next month uh, when all the pros watch this replay and I get casted by day 9 and get invited and uh, get to do all that cool stuff then you'll see, then you'll see uh, how really efficient this is in a way. Now we have four Ultralisk building and I'm sure that will wreak a lot of havoc uh, onto uh, Knives uh, fading empire here ladies and gentlemen. It seems like he's got some uh, shenanigans up his sleeve. Another word I really like, shenanigans. I want to say it again, shenanigans. Uh, killing this base but of course Polarev does not know but I'm sure he senses that uh, this base is uh, all up and running and not the forge because Knives likes those plasma shield upgrades. I'm sure he wants another pair and uh, now we see uh, the Polarev forces moving out. Out. Again, bunch of slow zealots uh, getting caught in the middle here, and uh, we see Ultralisks now on the way. Will they be able to get into battle in order to even further smash this zealot threat? Because Knight is out of forces, ladies and gentlemen. Polarev is now bearing down on the last zealot, and will he be able to win? Yes, he unburrowing, or rather burrowing. He might unburrow. That would be cool. Ah, oh, Knight GGs, and here we see the unburrows. I got a nice shot of that, and yeah, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you do it. That's how you do it in a different way. That's how you will be doing it from now on. I know you want to. Subconsciously, you didn't just feel that this was 24 minutes of your life. You will never get back. Or that you absolutely hate yourself and me uh, for forcing you to suffer through it. You feel that, hey, this, this, is, this is new. This is how it should be. More stuff like this. Just unupgraded roaches all game long. You don't see that too much anymore. Not even in the beta that was common. It was like pre-beta strategy. And that's old school. That's vintage. We want more of that. Nostalgia, ladies and gentlemen. Nostalgia, ladies and gentlemen. It's important to reminisce. And even though this never really happened or it became popular, it will be so now. It's our perception of history that makes it interesting. And ladies and gentlemen, this is history in the making. I am Sebastian Hoberg, And as I'm sure you figured out, Polarev is me. Uh, add me on Battle.net. And uh, maybe I'll cast uh, our... Terrific games in the future. I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm touched uh, to be able to bring this to you. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.